And Morgan Stanley uh, thinks that the S&P 500 is headed towards a bear market. So stock market was actually up today, um, but the S&P is still down from its 52-week high. Mm -hmm. Its 52-week high was 4,800, and it's currently right below 4,300. Um, so how do we feel about this prediction of a bear market coming? goes into what we've been saying and we haven't seen the worst of it yet. The, I think I was in a car with Dom dropping him off. And I think it was God Dami on CNBC. Uh, if you guys saw the interview earlier, you can put it if it was him or not. But he said this cycle going into a presidential season is actually one of the worst quarters. So the NASDAQ, when I did my estimation, I said to Saturday, we'll get to about negative 21%. The Dow has not fallen as much as it should yet. To know when the market is going to turn around, please keep your eyes on the London market because Europe is going to get hit a lot harder. So look at the FTSE, look at CAC. When they start to uptick, that's when you know like the bear market is going to end. Because So if Europe gets it, has a worse recession than us, we'll go up before they do. But to know when it's over, when the FTSE and the CAC begins to uptick and stays above that recession level, that's when we know we're in the clear. So until the Dow falls, we're not done completely. Um, we were up today, but Mondays and Fridays, the market has the highest probability of going up. If we go up Tuesday and Wednesday, that'd be a very great sign, but more than likely we're, we're not. We're probably going to fall tomorrow. Okay. So for those of you who are looking for shorts, look for your setup. You can look to short more than likely tomorrow. And most of the reason, a small influence, was this news with Elon. Let's say Tuesday and Wednesday, there won't be as much good news. The real test for how bad the bear market will be is Apple and Microsoft will earn We'll talk about it later. <laughs> if those numbers are not great, which yeah. they will be, and if the stock does not move up aggressively, or let's say they even have great numbers and we tank down, Apple and Microsoft are the ones to keep your eyes on because they are the two most important stocks in the country. So Apple, Microsoft, Google third, keep your eyes on those to see how the sentiment is because all the hedge funds already know they're just waiting for everything to play out, but everything's already been priced in. So keep your eyes on that. Yeah, that's that's interesting because I, I just heard Josh Brown, I said that it, was, it might've been this morning and he was talking about, look, Microsoft and Apple have really blinded us from what's really happening, right? If they ever pulled, had a major pullback, we would see the economy fully be in a recession, right? Like, or fully be into a, a bear market, I should, I should say. Um, the NASDAQ itself is already, in a bear market so when we talk about down 20 percent, and this is the third week in a row and i'm like yeah we're big on tech but again we got to find our right spots so we got to be mindful of that and one of the things that and I, i've pretty much seen the consensus around is like well where should we go because usually they'll talk about a sector rotation the sector rotation but like well what's the rotation now because no one can see where the next rotation is going to be except the guy with the Chris. <laughs> Is that the guy with the crystal ball? So I, I've, I've been reading articles. I've been seeing people saying farmer and biotech, but those have taken a beat. Like biotech is taking a huge beating over the past uh, 12 months. And so, you know, to, to not really have the, the trust in that, that sector is like, I can understand why people would, um, but you know, we just, just keep your eye on those, those two areas, farmer and biotech now, because that seems to be the consensus of what people are saying. If the S and P does pull back and it won't be just one or two companies, it'll be, they're saying like every company is going to pull back at the same time. And that's 500 companies. So obviously that's pretty much the U S economy. Look at those two sectors um, to be a place where you could probably find something with not as much of a downside. And I want to remind everyone sector rotation is for institutional traders that takes or companies that takes capital from clients and have to deploy or put it to use. Mm -hmm. So when um, Frederick has been on stock club call, shout out to Frederick. Dave has been on. These are all people that worked at BlackRock, like the biggest funds on earth. Both of them said the same thing. The number one advantage retail investors have is to be able to hold longer than the hedge fund. So you don't have to change sector by sector, quarter by quarter, or even strategy by strategy. The longer you hold quality, that is our, like for those of you who are like, I love what GameStop did, AMC did, and took over the institutions. You can do that if you just hold. But most of us don't. And the information that CNBC Bloomberg is reporting is not really for retail investors. This edge for institutional fund to fund 
type investor. So if you hold on, you don't have to focus on sector rotation. Now, the truth is most of the companies right now that are publicly traded are terrible. <laughs> and I told you when we first did it, quantitative easing, once that went away. And I, I told you guys, the only flaw in two tech, two index is if inflation got over 19%. We're not there yet. If we get to 19, you're going to see me sweat a little bit. We haven't seen a work. This is barely a hard pullback. This is nothing in comparison to 2016, uh, August 24, 2015. And I'll drop a gem on you guys um, who weren't there. I wish you guys were there. But learn how to trade the FTSE, German DAX, Japanese Nikkei. So even if the rotation happens by country, you still have to be able to produce money. All countries and economies will not be down. So you have to be able to produce alpha or gain somewhere. So if you know how to trade every index and go back to episode 70, I gave you guys an entire blueprint there. Be able to trade every index on earth. You won't lose money, especially on the future side. Those of you that are trading or if you're doing options, and doing puts, you should be making money hand over fist because we have a clear direction. Quantitative easing is a way. We have more fear than ever. Institutions are afraid. There's not as much capital being put out. Angels, investors are investing less. Mm -hmm. Secondary rounds are different. Seed value rounds are not different. Yeah, the value of trading is going down. Yeah, it's easy. We have more shorts and more downside pressure. Take advantage of it. Yeah, another, another one is agriculture, another sector. Just to keep your eye on, right? I'm not sure if anybody's paying attention, but China, you know, they're still, they're battling the COVID virus right now. And there's plenty of lockdowns and it's headed toward Beijing, which is obviously a major, major city. So yeah. there's, you know, their lockdowns a lot different from ours, a little bit more. I shouldn't even say a little bit, a lot more control where you're not allowed to leave your residence. And so if people are not able to get to food and not able to go outside to shop for food, these are some of the, the, the things we got to take into a, a account when we're talking about, all right, yeah. well, if that's a shortage, then obviously there's going to have to be somebody that fulfills that, that shortage. So agriculture might be one of those things to look at as well. Absolutely. And to tie into that, you guys need to look into any food manufacturers that has little to no debt. Uh, because even with the water disparity that's happening and the water shortage, the food shortage is going to get bad. And if you guys have been doing your research, you've seen what's happened in food manufacturing over the last six or seven weeks. There is a big event happening in that space. I'll say that and leave it there. Uh, kudos to my guy who submitted that article. Please go look and research what has happened in, in the food space. So if you can find a good one, there may be a lot less competition which would drive up prices and make that stock as a result more valuable. So I want you guys to take the emotion out of it. Look at the data. If the market is clearly down, if you're a trader, add to your positions. Don't hold them for long. Obey your targets. Do not deviate. Patience pays. So you may only get four amazing trades, but those four amazing trades may pay you what 12 last year would have paid you. And if you are truly an investor and you can go both directions, I'm not going to do a Charles Barkley, I promise you. But if you guys can go both directions, you should make a killer. When a man bang you, I was like, Charles, what you be, boy? Yeah, he went too far. He went too crazy. Hey, right? you saw the first person that laughed was Kenny Smith, right? Facts. New York City, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Charlemagne post, can we grow up? I'm like, no, never. No, that, we're that never going. Now we're not. We're not going Never. To. We're not going to. Oh. oh, and also, soybean, if you guys can... Homework right now, quiz question. What is a company or a ticker that will allow you to invest in soybeans? That soybean future has been going up like crazy. So when certain commodities go up, that's why I say like the one thing that Kramer said that is always true. There is a bull market somewhere. Soybean has been going up like crazy. There are a couple other commodities that have been taken off um, during this recession. That is definitely one of them. The market still pays those who are patient. Absolutely. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>